my name is Gino Chataruna. My, I come from the from Peru, from the natives of the Andes, the Incas. My grandfather was an Inca. He passed at 100 years old. He was a curandero, a healer, very powerful. So he introduced me at a young age to work with plants, the Pachamama, the apples, nature, the wind, water, fire, and the dirt. And then later I embraced the wisdom of the Amazonian. So um, I was called the Chacaruna in Quechua, meaning Chaca is the bridge, Runa is the spirit or the human bridge, which bridge up and down the worlds, the north and the south, human with nature. So this is the work of a Chakaruna. I'm a shaman who works with those no, both knowledges, the Andean and the Amazonian, which go pretty much together. And the way to do this work is mainly through the right attitude, with an open heart, transparent, crystal clear, honest, respectful and especially humble. finished a three-day ayahuasca retreat. Now Don Gino, you, you grew up in Peru and you have um, a lot of knowledge on, on many of the tribal traditions. Um, I, I have very limited knowledge but from what I heard, heard about the Shipibo traditions it's very difficult to integrate it into modern lifestyles in the West in particular. For example, um, I heard that the warriors, when they drink ayahuasca, they stand and they hold a spear. And uh, if it gets really, really overwhelmingly powerful, mm -hmm. they can only go down to one knee, but nothing more, they can't lay down or sit. So they stand for most of the ceremony. <coughs> Well, that is a very special uh, ayahuasca vine that really gets you stiff. You cannot even move the muscles. And uh, that is very rare. Most of the tribes, Shipibo, Machienga, 
kokama en men inka kero many others uh, use the plants as uh, medicine because uh, in the tribes in the uh, older days there were no hospitals there were no doctors so they have to use whatever they have as rich if a kid was beaten by a spider they will bring him to the shaman and the shaman will know what to plant put as a plaster or to drink or if a little kid has parasites also another plant they will drink maybe uh, 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 home, what is the name of this plant yeah, hoe, not hoe, but hoe, something like that is very powerful to kill the parasites inside, but very risky. It has to be very, every, every plant has a balance. You overdo, and instead of healing you, gets, you, you get worse. In the older days, these plants were used by that, but also they were used uh, to oversee or to see beyond. Like, for instance, a native would have been stolen his cow. He will go to a shaman, the shaman will drink ayahuasca, which is a master plan, and in his visions, he could see who stole the cow and where is it. And when he comes back, he will tell the peasant, you see that mountain over there, the little house? Go there, your cow is there. And the person will go and the cow is there. So the shaman, which is a word that we don't use in the Amazon, in the in the in the Andes, is called uh, Yatiri in the highlands, very strong hill, Quechua. Also the Taita, which is the elder with certain knowledge of how to prepare a despacho or pay him back to Pachamama. Next level is the Pampa Misayok, who is even higher than the Taita, has more power doing the despacho, communicating with nature, with the Apus. The Apus are the mountains. Every mountain has a deity inside. It's called an Apu very strong. The, the mountains and the apples are the higher expression of the earth going to heaven. And the Alto Misayok, which is the highest, is the one that really is a real strong shaman who can do the same as the others, but also can have power over nature over the rain, over the clouds, over the wind, over the darkness sides, the supai, supai chakra, is always playing games, the darkness in the mountains. So these, these people are, are chosen. Uh, Alpomi Sayok has a very special uh, conditions because in the Andes, for instance, there is a lot of kids that they go to pasture the, the cows and they go barefoot. And there is a lot of storms, very strong storms with thunders and rays. Probably during a year, one or two kids die struck by a thunder or a ray. But one also is striking by a ray, but this one doesn't die. And it's even said that it strike three times. The first ray breaks him down, kills him. Second gray ray gets him alive, and the second ray puts the pieces together. And that kid is open in his pioneer land, and they kiss this kid that was chosen by Pachamama because he didn't die, even through a ray, 
becomes an Alto Misayuk. And this heat is put under the wing of an elder Alto Misayuk during his whole life to learn all the wisdom. In the Amazon, on the, on the other side, there is a Taita also, the Onaya, who is, uh, let's say, shaman, curandero, with certain powers. And then the Meraya, who is even bigger, has other powers, plants, animals. And then the Sumiruna, who is like the Alto Misayuk in the Andes. It is said that these guys could go in the river and without coming out of the river could go in another town underwater. These are myths. Of course, every myth has a certain reality. So the shaman or curandero, in the Amazon they call it curandero or palero or vegetalista. Palero, palo is a stick or a tree. Since they heal with the skin of the tree, of many trees they know, they are called paleros. Vegetalista means vegetalist. So they know more about the plants, all kinds of plants and leaves, how to cook, how to brew for certain diseases. And the ayahuasquero. The ayahuasquero can be ayahuasquero, can be ayahuasquero and vegetalista, can be ayahuasquero, vegetalista and palero, which is a very strong one. Shaman world comes from the Siberia, the Tingus tribe, many, many years ago. And it meant Shaman, the one who knows, was the meaning. But if you ask yourself, the one who knows what, it was a tribal mode. Mostly in each tribe was an elder. The elder, of course, was the one who knows, because he's an elder, he has more experience. But the ones who knows what in those times? Where was going to be a good raining season? When was a good hunting season? How to heal a little boy? When they were going to be attacked by the enemy tribe? How to go into the other realm to connect? with the spirits and bring information. So at the end, my belief is a, a real shaman has four legs, like a table. The seer, the one that can see beyond, like, I feel that we are going to be attacked by another tribe in a couple of weeks. That is a seer. The healer who heals the tribe in many, many ways, spiritually, physically, emotionally. The warrior, in ceremony and out ceremony, very strong, especially during ceremony. And the maestro, because he's the elder, he's the one that knows better, he's the one that teaches the tribe on the values and what, how to behave. This was a good shaman with the four legs, which now I think there are very, very, very little. I'm not saying I have that, but I have some of those legs. Maybe the four, I don't know. I am not the one to say. Could but this is my understanding. Sorry? Could you perhaps explain um, the calling to become a shaman because I've heard um, through various shamans I've met before uh, one from Mexico he was struck by lightning mm -hmm. as a baby mm -hmm. and um, that was a sign in their village that he is a shaman so mm -hmm. he got initiated from a very young age as I said I think that uh, Pachamama in nature calls you Sometimes the tribe or the community sees their power and the difference. The river. This is a calling. You can feel it since you are very young. 
I felt in myself when I was 15 years old. I'm 61 now. So it took me 61 years to become a shaman. People ask me, how, how, how many years are you a shaman? 61 years. It's a whole life. You start doing certain things. You're a seeker. You ask questions. You don't take everything from granted. The very simple things, uh, questions. Where do I come from? What am I here? What for? Where am I going? And I, I believe that transformation is a very important factor when you have a certain experience and you get an extremely valuable lesson and revelation and then you're transformed and the person you were before that is it's almost like a different person. You're always the same person, always. It's just that those parts that you are already are not ready to come up still. You have to go through a long path. The best shamans are the ones that have gone in their own darkness, really, really dark. The more darkness you go, the slightest light calls you because you're in darkness and when you reach that light and then you transform but knowing both sides of the coin you know the darkness you've been there for years and then you decide to go in the light only then you can become a good shaman because you know how darkness work you can spot darkness and darkness cannot fool you some are tempted by the darkness again to come back with more knowledge and some go. But the good ones stay with the light. They work through the darkness for the light. This is how it works. You work through the darkness for the light. That really resonates with me because I've been to a few ceremonies with other shamans where they just played happy music the whole night mm. and I couldn't purge. I had to leave and go outside in nature. Um, and the last three nights, it was a mixture of very beautiful, happy music and then some minor, sad, bluesy music that really allowed everyone to um, explore the shadow and really accept what they find mm. and be at peace with it. The thing is that, as I said, in the natives, the Shipibo, Machiengas, Kokamas, they have a very fixed... Nowadays, there is a native shaman, the mestizo shaman, who is in between the new age shaman, if you want to call it. But to me, the mestizo shaman for these days is the one that works better because he knows the native, he comes part from the native, but also he comes from the other world. So he understands both worlds. A native can hardly deal with the diseases that are brought from Europe or the developed countries, such as PTSD disorder, bipolarity, psychosis, stress, depression, sexual abuse, physical abuse, bad parenthood, bad childhood. Those things doesn't exist in us, right? The mestizo probably have been traveling abroad many times, but also stays in the natives, and he can really understand what the developed countries bring, because he has been mingled and blend in those cultures, which is my case. <coughs> he speaks many languages, it can, people can understand, and uh, today, it's very funny and very risky because uh, even in Peru you can find many shamans, so-called shamans that are just fake. 
the fact that you wear a rob or some feathers doesn't make you a shaman. Even people say, my father, my grandfather was a shaman. My father was a shaman. I'm a shaman. It's not like that. You can transfer the knowledge and the tools, but you can never transfer the power. You either have the power or you don't have it. If you don't have the power, you can even go to a ceremony, learn some songs, play the shaman, but there's no power. And the people feel it. When the shaman is powerless and is not a rock, anything happens in the ceremony. Drama, shouting, people going crazy because there's no rock. When there is a rock, boom, only the presence. You are the owner of that orchestra and you play with the orchestra, going high, going too high, a little low, high again, to a lot of people do the work, low, and then you start bringing them back. If you see uh, being said about anawaska, they drink jurema and mimosa, I think, two cups, and they say they, they, they stay six, eight, ten hours, twelve hours, of course. Everybody goes at their own rhythm, here you can see that in four hours, I take everybody in, take everybody up, down, spread the energy, or again up, again down, and then bring them all back as a unit. This is the moon. You are the, the, the leader, the guide, the rock, the shaman, the curandero, the warrior. It's very... Now you go to Europe or anywhere in the States, Canada, I don't know, you pick up a stone and there is a shaman on the stone. Everywhere. And this is a risk. Going in a shaman is like picking a doctor for a big surgery. When you look for a doctor, you want really a doctor that knows what are the references. Is. Did he make surgery through you? How was it? Yes. So you have to do your work, your homework. Otherwise, you put in your life, your spiritual energy, your heart, your mind, in a person that maybe you should not. So before watching at the rub, at the feathers, or the native looks, try to see who is inside that person. And if you cannot ask references, did you go there? How was it for you? Some people go in shamans and they come back more sick and with some darkness inside that they can feel. I have heard that many, many times. And then because you went to somebody that was not prepared. That's why I always say there are a lot of shamans in the new age, the, 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 the shamans from abroad, they can be good shamans. I'm not saying that it's not possible. But you have to learn. And even if you learn and you don't have the power, it's risky. Some, of course, can have the power. This is a gift. But they go to the Amazon. They do a dieta, 10 days. And they feel the call. Oh, I'm the shaman. I'm the shaman now. Oh, my God. And then they go back home and they start doing their own ceremonies with 10 days experience. People can die. Yeah. I have seen many things, people throwing against the wall, people choking because there's no shaman, there's no rock. When your shaman comes in a room, you can feel the presence and the energy. Without being big show, humble. But you can feel the presence very strong. You feel safe, you feel secure, you trust. Then you go. And uh, there's two persons in the corners watching. They call them guides. They guide what? They guide you to the toilet. That's all they can do. Because they're just watching you. Nobody creates the, 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 the vibrations. No one, nobody taking initiative. 
and really not even the initiative all this work is about vibration yeah. about controlling the energies that are happening people now say i'm going to hold space what is hold space you're going to hold the space you don't hold the space you create the space for things to happen you create you clean the space you make a sacred place and then you do whatever you have to do in a, in a protected space. But this is words that everybody uses. I'm going to hold the space. To me, it's just words. Create the space for this to happen. It has to be sacred. Respect. Reverence. Really, really humbleness. Honesty. Crystal clear. with Working with your heart. With your best vibration. Also, we have problems. I always say, separate anything that you bring outside the door. Come with your best intention, clean. Before anybody can do the work, any shaman, shamans also get dirty. I have known many, many shamans that, poof, they have such, such dirt, darkness. Before I come to Europe, every time I do one week my own work, drinking. Is that alone in silent darkness? Or? I drink. I drink with my people, with my my employ, my cookers. We drink, even without before cooking. We make a ceremony, sitting in the chair. We gotta clean, 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 clean. Then we start cooking. You have to be clean to cook the brew with the best intention. Blow to the mother, sing to the mother in each bow, ask forgiveness and for cutting and ask permission that you will use this beautiful medicine to heal. And that medicine is at peace, is at ease. If ayahuasca is not at ease, then things happen in the ceremony. Many things. It's a spirit. It is a spirit. A very old spirit. Now, I've done ayahuasca 18 times now. Mm -hmm. And the first six to eight times, incredibly healing. And then I got to a point where I was purging a lot, but then there was a last bit that I couldn't purge. And people tried to help, and it wasn't coming out. And it happened a few times, and I was like, the medicine's probably not working for me anymore but last night I got an incredible <clears throat> lesson <laughs> so I had the problem a little bit on the first and second night there was still a little bit left that I couldn't purge and I really put all my effort in and it didn't quite come and then last um last night I didn't purge at all when the sickness came I just promised uh, mother ayahuasca that I would stick to what I promised to do, mm -hmm. which is to do good and these specific tasks. And ayahuasca has really helped to give the strength to become a better person. That is the aim. But be careful, because if you commit to the mother or promise, you have to deliver. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, she yeah. gives you back. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. She sees everything. Yeah. In ceremony and outside ceremony. Every behavior. Now, um, I've studied science most of my life. And it seems like humanity and sci a lot of scientists are under a delusion that we're the most intelligent um, animal creature being on the planet yet very simple what we consider simple life forms like bacteria and plants they've evolved to live far far longer mm. and live much more purer as well than human beings yet we still think we're the smartest and mm. surrendering to Mother Ayahuasca, you really feel like you're back in the womb and she really nourishes you again. And 
basically teaches you that there's far more intelligence in in plants and nature than, mm. than humans. The plants have been here more than 500 years before us, thousands, millions of years before us. They have all the knowledge, they have seen how the planet was shaped, everything. And they transfer this information from vine to vine to vine to vine. That's why sometimes they take you, you see the universe. You see how the earth was shaped, you see your past lives. It's a connection with the spirit. She just drops the veil, as I explained. I call her uh, the best uh, apocalypsis, because in Greek, apocalypsis is dropping the veil. So she just drops the veil so you can see inside. Everything is already there, but you're blind. The matrix keeps you blind. You cannot see. You think that because you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes, you're awakened. You're even more sleeping when you open your eyes than when you're dreaming. Because in dreaming, you're in an altered state of consciousness. When you open your eyes, you come in this theater of so-called reality. Unless you wake up, then you can play the game. You know it's just a game. But you start feeling the vibration of the persons in the eyes, in the voice, in how they move. You can feel it. That is a good shaman. Shamans are so awakened. When you see a shaman, you will see that they hardly blink. Not on purpose. They hardly blink. They're always looking at everything. Once in a while, of course, to wet the the to wet the the ice, of course, but then uh, uh, they're always aware, always alert, without being. You will notice that the shaman hardly blinks. It's always not on purpose. It's just something that happens naturally. Awareness. Awareness. Awareness so, of the present. The present. The shaman is always present. And really a shaman, I think, it can be a good shaman in ceremony. And even if the medicine is good, anybody can do the ceremony. And it will work. With a lot of risks. A shaman is, a shaman is known outside, in his daily life, his behavior how he treats his people, respect, humbleness, reverence for life, respecting nature, caring for people, caring for himself, taking care of his loved ones. This is a good shaman. Thank you. Could you tell me a bit about what actually goes into the ayahuasca mixture, there's many different recipes. There are many recipes, of course. I stick to the old one from the Shipibo tribe. Others put tobacco, others put even toe. The bell flower is very risky. Or other plants. Sometimes I use chagropanga, but mainly I just use the kapi and the chacruna. This is the old mixture. And I brew it myself. I do not work with anything that I have not brewed myself. It takes time, it takes effort, three weeks. You have to boil and boil for hours and hours. Some people even, because this has become really a business. <coughs> Everybody jumping in because they think there is money or power or ego, even sex. And they brew and they take 10 cooks of the same plants. 
because they think they're going to get more. That's, that is very irresponsible. I do, I do two brews and that's it. Because third, fourth, it gets less and less and less and less. Others take three, four. My system is two brews, that's it. The first one is very strong and then the second one is still strong. And then I cook that and I reduce the medicine and you see the medicine I get. It's very powerful, thick. Hmm? And, uh, and the spirit is there, at, at ease, in peace. So uh, that is my, my, my system. I don't use any other thing. It's water, ayahuasca and chakruna. Mm -hmm. Could you explain uh, the different vines? There's a yellow, a, a red and various other colors. What is the... There are many, many others, but some ayahuascas, they don't do anything. There's the yellow ayahuasca, it's good, it's strong. The red ayahuasca, puka ayahuasca. The yellow is the keio ayahuasca. And then the black ayahuasca, yana ayahuasca. It goes very down. I work with the cielo. For me, after trying all of them, is the one that works the better, the cielo ayahuasca, which means heaven, heaven ayahuasca. And the difference is that, well, to recognize the vine when you cut it, is the only one that has a little flower shape on the middle. There are thousands of vines. You can cut them all and they don't have this flower. Only the, and also when you chew it, it's, it's uh, sour and it, it gets your lips numb. Cielo Ayahuasca has a really a red vine in the middle and it's very, very light. Dark Ayahuasca is very heavy. The cielo is like that, maybe that's why it's called cielo, because it's light yeah. in the weight. Okay. And it's a very good one. It takes you to the three worlds, the under, underworld, this world, and the upper world. The other ayahuascas or anahuasca, they take you to bliss and your heart and love, but there's no work. First you need to do your work. And yeah. that's going to the three worlds, which is linked to the Andean Cosmovision. The Andean Cosmovision is based on the three worlds. The Utku Pacha, as you call it, Pachamama, Utku Pacha is the underworld, where are the darkness, shadows, your own shadows, and it's ruled by the snake. And then you go to the Kai Pacha, which is this plane, past, even past lives, present, near future, information, insights, after the cleansing that is ruled by the Puma. And then you're taken to the Hanak Pacha or the upper world, which is ruled by the Kundur, taking the souls of bliss. So in my view, the Incas, which were older than the natives in the Amazon, they design their cosmovision based on these three worlds, which again, the only way to see this is through ayahuasca. So they drank these plants before in San Pedro. There are temples in the north of Peru, Chavin de Huantar is a huge temple where they have found in high relief in the San Pedro image in ayahuasca. Because there was a big connection between the Amazon and the Andes. You go to the Andes, where there is no Amazon, and you have many ruins, and in some ruins you will find, up in high relief, monkeys. There have never been monkeys in the Andes. They were brought by the Amazonians as pets to the Incas, also food parrots or guacamayos and feathers and seeds and of course medicine plants which only the elite could drink at that time nobody was allowed only the elite of the empire 
They will go, drink, go to the other realm, take all this powerful information, come back and apply it and share it with the community and the tribe. That was like that. Now, probably Mother Ayahuasca is trying to shape the new elites. What I say is, we have opened the bottle of the genie, and the genie is out, and nobody can stop that genie. Not even control. But the bad thing is that we don't even know what the three wishes are. So the genie is just out there. And that is why bad shamans are using it, putting people at risk. No shamans are using it, putting people at risk. Anahuasca with playlists, putting, putting people at risk. A good friend of mine is Colombian. And about 20 years ago, he went traveling into the Amazon in Colombia and he went missing and no one heard from him for many, many, many months. And the father went to look for him and found him living with a tribe and he was married to the witch doctor's daughter and they found him like running naked, just making animal noises. And he took him back to Bogota where they lived and took him to see, he was a very wealthy lawyer and he took mm -hmm. his son to see so many top, top doctors. And after two years, they couldn't help him at all. He was still making animal noises. Mm -hmm. And they said that he should see an ayahuasca shaman. And he did a two, two week, two weeks of ayahuasca ceremonies. And he became a... Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Look. And now he's rock climbing all the time. In ayahuasca, scientist community is very aware of what it is and they have respect. I have a friend, psychiatry from high school, he did a, I'm a really a very particular shaman because I grew in the Andes, but also in the city. Maybe an urban shaman, I don't know. This is not what I live off, this is not my source of income. I studied. I do architecture and other things. I do this from the heart, really. I'm 61 already, getting a little tired. My body is starting to break down. Probably I will do one more year, maybe. But uh, going to your question, this friend of mine who did ayahuasca since university to study from the scientific point of view, he was asked, so do you believe that anybody can take ayahuasca? And he said, no. Heart disease is a risk. Asthma. Also, you can get choke. Diabetes. But from the mind point of view, bipolars, psychotics, schizophrenics, they cannot take ayahuasca. At least as it is known now, now, maybe the future will be microdosis. I think they're working on that. But for now, they cannot take because all these diseases, they put the person is only his ego. It's like a house of cards. And whatever the waska does first is cut your ego. And then the house of cards crumbles. And that person cannot find himself again. It's lost. So maybe this is what happened to this kid. Mm -hmm. Now, they call it the teacher plant. Yeah. Uh, there's various other medicinal plants that are used, such as tobacco, which is a different form of tobacco that is mm -hmm. sold as regular cigarettes. Uh, can you explain how uh, tobacco shamans say that put tobacco as like the king of all plants? It's because it's older. 
es el abuelo tabaco. Es un bus en many, many ways. Cleansing, purging, healing, protection. Uh, it could be said that it's the older, but I think ayahuasca, in a personal view, has much more power. I mean, tobacco, we have to have a lot of respect. And when they work together, it's even much better. Uh, it's, it's, it's used, it was used before in the tribes. They, they didn't know ayahuasca first, so they used it as to chew it and to swallow or to spit it or to heal a wound or to heal a child, the so-called mal de ojo, <laughs> soplada, the soplada. Mm -hmm. And still they, they're working with that. But uh, not my expertise, not my expertise, I know a little bit, so I don't know what I don't know. But uh, ayahuasca, well, is what I do. And beyond that, I, uh, I don't speak much more, many more of ayahuasca. I, what are my expertise is consciousness. This is what I know and what I talk about, which ayahuasca brings to you. Ayahuasca, there's a lot of books, mm -hmm. YouTube, you can read. Bush, by the way, there is a lot of nonsense said in those, but some, some is true. Nobody can tell you what an, an ayahuasca experience is, not even you, you, know, you have done in words. It's, nobody will understand, you have to go through yourself. Yeah. Do your, the people that you learnt the tradition from, do they use uh, mushrooms at all? Very little in the Abbasid. It's more the, from the occidental part. Now they're bringing, that's because it's fashion, you know, in Cusco, in the Andes, the foreigners, not many in the Amazon, no. And what might mushrooms, what kind of knowledge? How does the every, knowledge differ? Every plant has a different knowledge. A different spirit. The ayahuasca has this beautiful divine feminine spirit. San Pedro has a male spirit very strong to connect with Pachamama. There is a little infant spirit in the mushrooms, playful but also, yeah, every plant has its risk. Also, you can go to darkness here. Yeah. You can go to darkness in San Pedro. Depends on who is guiding you. That is why I always say when people ask me, can I drink ayahuasca by myself? I say, it's a free world, but my answer is no. Because you can have 100 beautiful ceremonies, but the 101, you will go indoors that you don't want to open by yourself. And then there will be nobody to bring you back. And you will be in trouble. Yeah. Valuable lesson. Eh? A valuable lesson. Valuable lesson, yes. I really felt like in the ceremonies with you, you brought, um, it was a very strong feminine uh, presence with Mother Ayahuasca. Yeah. And there were a lot of women, I think more women than men in the yeah. room. And then um, your masculinity really brought balance. Yeah. yeah. And I really felt that the rock, the, the, you provided mm -hmm. like a, a pillar of support. It was very, it has to very be. good for guidance. This is what I learned. The elders, the shamans, they were very humble. They would, they don't move around and do in theater. I have seen many ceremonies and people going around and dancing or touching. I'm not criticizing. Everybody has his own system. My first lesson was. You have to be a rock, and the rocks don't move unless they are needed. So, if you are a rock, rooted and with presence, there's no need to move around. Your presence will go over there if you want. With the chakapa, sometimes you need to approach to do a personal work, only when you need it. 
Otherwise, you don't. This is how you, how I do my work. I'm not comparing, not better or worse. It's just a different way. The shipibo, the mestizo way. And in my case, even mestizo, because I'm half Italian also from my father. So I have the European blood plus the Inca blood plus the Negro black blood in the whole mixture. And I have been walking in that past, as I said, since I was 15. Always. And now, finally, I decided to do this some years ago. Without leaving behind my other income, I, I live on the other income. This is something I do only twice a year in Europe. In Peru, I go there not so much because I want to rest. But that was my commitment to come twice a year to do the work, boom, 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 and then go back home to rest with my family. And a well deserved rest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's hard. The ceremony is like a circus, really. Yeah. There's so many energies. There's 20 people. The circus meaning these guys that plays with the balls. How do you call it? Akagla. Yeah. One ball is 20 persons. There's one ball. Or if you want 20 balls. Different problems, different traumas, different gifts, different approach, whatever. Second ball is the ceremony itself, energy. Sometimes it's too high, you have to lower it. Sometimes it's really low, you have to bring it up to balls. The participants is one ball, plus the ceremony itself. Third ball, all the animals and plants and all masters that you call it in the space. Fourth ball, my own energy. Fifth ball, Mother Ayahuasca's energy. Sixth ball, the darkness playing around. One ball goes down, and the circus goes down. Before starting each ceremony, uh, you mentioned that forget everything you've learned in the past. Mm. And wipe the slate clean. And um, that really struck home very important message there. It worked for you? Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. thing is that many people read, watching YouTube, get stories from other people. Religion, of course. Religion. Science. Oof, religion well. is the worst. Because science is also a religion. Science. Yeah. You know, bringing your mind, your reason. All that is not needed. Mm -hmm not even not needed, it's forbidden. Because you go like this and then you have so many things in your mind that your mind will not shut up in four hours and the medicine will not get through. The best way is to leave, leave your logic, behind. leave the logic at the doorstep. Yeah. It's nothing you need to understand. This one wants to understand everything. How is this done? Why is this happening? Why? You don't need this. You're going to go beyond that. In consciousness, some people even see their bodies. They see their bodies and see what everything is happening around. So the less you bring in or the more blank you come, even the ceremony yesterday, forget it. Or the other shaman ceremonies, good or bad, forget it. YouTube. No, just come blank, surrender. If you have a cup of tea, what makes the cup useful is the void. If the cup is empty, there's no use. You have to throw it away first to make it useful again. So come, that is why I say come empty, open and ready to receive the mother. That void is what is useful. If you have this totally full, nothing will get through. It will just create walls and walls and walls and walls and the mother will not come. 
it would be very difficult. I liken to it, I liken it to all the information that you see, read, hear. It becomes like pollution in your brain totally. and in your body. Totally. And it festers and grows and grows and grows. And ayahuasca really flushes it out. And it's like a river that becomes really polluted and stagnant. And then a big tidal wave comes through, Mother Ayahuasca, a tidal wave mm -hmm. and clears all the pollution out and then it's free flowing, blue, beautiful, and there's loads of life. The worst thing of that is that besides pollution, creates expectations of what you have read. Maybe you have read that somebody got in a very dark, uh, oh my God, what if darkness comes and the demons and this, and you're aware, you're waiting. Or some others say, oh, it's beautiful, the colors and the visions and the patterns, and you're expecting. Sometimes there's no patterns and no colors, but you have beautiful insights. Sometimes there's not even insights, but you go to the toilet five times and you perish. Beautiful cleansing. So, the way to come is just to surrender with trust, no mind, no control, no expectations. This is how you should go. I know it sounds easy. It is easy. I always put the example. If your mother comes to you when you were five and grabs your hand and says, Come, Josh, come with me. You don't even know where she's taking you. But she's your mother and you trust and you go with her. Blindly. Same is here. The mother ayahuasca is a representation of motherhood. All the mothers in one. Many people have got in closure with bad moments of their mothers which they couldn't before they passed and they have in closure with the mother ayahuasca. It's the motherhood itself. Others embrace the mother, their mothers have passed, and they embrace the mother of their mother. They can speak with their mothers. One of the best ways to connect with your loved ones that have already passed is this door. It's a big door. They usually come and talk to you. Yeah. Now, when it comes to purging and ensuring that you don't make the same mistakes that caused the original um, poison within you, uh, what other practices could help outside of the ceremony in everyday life to maintain the pureness that ayahuasca instilled into you? The message is very clear. Ayahuasca cleanses you through all the body holes, through going to the toilet, in the rear, your mouth, your eyes crying, even your ears, and uh, even your sexual area. So all the doors or the holes of the body that are used to cleanse are the ones that you unconsciously again use to get contaminated. Mouth, whatever comes from your words, you can heal or you can really damage somebody with your words. Food coming in. It can be very healthy or very, very contaminated. Your eyes, you can see somebody with loving eyes or with hate eyes or whatever you watch, television, killing, accidents, war, blood, it comes through here and feeds inside again and again and again. Sounds, you can listen to beautiful classical music or whatever you like, soft music, new age, which nurtures you, or you can go in a bloody discotheque really, really loud and brr, 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 and it goes through here, contaminated. And also, the words you hear. If you go out with a gang 
and they will just use nine swearing words out of ten, mm -hmm. then, you, then you get contaminated. If that happens, excuse me, no, no, I'm leaving, okay? Because those words are loaded with the meaning that they put on them. Hate, envy, you know? Even the sexual area is the biggest gate because a condom can stop a disease, but a condom doesn't stand the energy. And all the couples of the couple that you are now are still there for seven years in the energy. And they will go through you without knowing, and vice versa. So you have to be very careful with it. That is the answer. If you're clean through the holes, keep your holes closed or open for the right things to come. Okay? Thank you. Any other question you have? Thank you so much for the yes. wonderful free nights and all the good work for cleansing so many people and helping people find, reach in and live from their heart again and Thank find you. love and to do to be good and righteous and Thank you, Josh. I'm very happy to share this, and whenever you want, I'm at your service. Okay? Thank you very much. We'll be Thank well, you for listening. Friend. Thank you. Was, was good for you? Yeah.